here we are in our uh, in another edition of what we have it's called actually beyond kicking and punching and beyond kicking and punching gives me the opportunity to talk with other grand masters into the field of the martial arts in this episode here we'll have in grand master george Lim out of phoenix arizona now we are together in in salt lake city uh helping sam alice uh, grand master sam alice promote and put together what he calls the unified Grand Masters Association of America, correct? That's and great. that that said, um, there's a lot of things that we are doing here, and we got some fantastic people here. And one of the best seniors we have here is the man himself, Grand Master George Lim. Now, what I want to do is ask him questions. I know I'm kind of putting him on the spot on the, on this way. I'm just going to be sort of like informal on this one here. Yeah, I mean, it's like. I want to ask you this, you know, because people ask, you know, how long has Master Lin been practicing the martial arts? Well, it's an honor and pleasure, and it's a privilege, uh, Senior Grand Master Sifu Al, um, being interviewed, talking with one of my idols since I was a teenager. Oh. So, yeah, it's a very humbling experience. To answer your question, it's been 50 years now practicing martial arts for me, and I've been humbled and blessed by doing that. You started your martial arts where? Uh, I started in San Diego with the CHA3 bench okay. there, and then I continued my training in Hawaii mm -hmm. under uh, Professor Marino T1X. Mm -hmm. When he was still alive? Yes, sir. Okay. And then, um, have you had a chance to work, work with Michael then? Yes, uh, Michael T1X. Professor Michael now mm -hmm. and Richard Barassas were my two training partners back then. Mm -hmm. I know that going to sort of like give away your age or something. How long ago was What year was that? Um, I started in 1972. And um, but you you are local born here? I mean on the mainland? No, I was born in Yokohama, Japan. Uh -huh. uh, my parents, uh, my mother is Japanese. My father is Filipino Chinese. Mm -hmm. So that's where the Lin Lin comes from. Yes, sir. Yeah. So. Did you, did you get a chance to practice the uh, the Chinese and the Filipino arts? Yes, sir, I did. Uh, when I was 13 years old, uh, I'm a Navy brat. My father was in the Navy, submarine forces for 30 years. Uh -huh. And uh, we were stationed in uh, Cebu City in the Philippines. And I got to practice there for a little bit for about two years. Mm -hmm. And then I practiced in Japan, back, back stationed in Japan. In uh -huh. And I practiced there for about four years. Do you have siblings? Yes, sir, I do. I have two sisters, one younger. Both of them are younger. Uh -huh. Here on the mainland? Uh, yes, one is in Las Vegas and the other one is in San Diego. All right. Guys, you guys are going to be listening and you are getting a little bit more on this in here. But I just want to uh, tell you that, you know, subscribe to what we're doing here. Subscribe and with the, with the subscription that you see at the bottom over here and the bell on this side here and the thumbs up on that side, I think or maybe part of the other way. But anyway, guys, go ahead and subscribe to it because we can give you a lot of good information on this one here. And now I'm gonna ask you more questions. How did you get your wife involved? I worked with, we were working in the grocery business together and she knew uh, the grocery store has a newsletter every month. Mm -hmm. And she found out that I was doing martial arts. And uh, we started dating each other. Then we were married in 1989 and she wanted to start taking classes. And uh, she believed, and so do I, that the best gift I could give my wife and my children is to have them be able to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. So that's how we can start. How many children do you have? I have two, uh, two boys. Age? Uh, one is 42 and the other one's 40. Whoa, damn. How can it be? You hit 42. <laughs> <laughs> You started having baby when you were one year old. Thank you. Man, you look so young. Hey, Thank you. What happened when you're Asians, right? No kidding, right? That's hilarious. I'm, I'm, what do your kids do? Are they doing the martial arts? Uh, my youngest boy is Michael Lim, and he has a school in San Diego, mm -hmm. California. Uh, but my oldest boy, he's a pastor in a ministry in a church in Connecticut. How many schools in your organization do you have now? I have six schools in local Arizona, uh, two schools in South Dakota, uh, one school in Wyoming, 
uh, one school, two schools in Portugal, one school in Spain, and one school in Germany. That's pretty good. Now, if people wanted to get involved learning from you and your system, how, how can they contact you? Oh, well, they can contact me by reaching out, uh, whether by email, um, PM Messenger, uh, whatever is convenient for them. Or if they're in the Phoenix area, they can uh, get a hold of me. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's probably the easiest way. Mm -hmm. Great. And um, tell me more about your, your martial arts, uh, your Kaju Kembo experience and everything. Um, like I said, I started on the CHA3 branch in San Diego back in the early 70s and continued my training with Professor Marina too and that. And at that time, I didn't know what I was getting involved in. I just wanted to do martial arts. Later on, as I was taught history, I found out that uh, Professor Marino, with, along with uh, Joe Imperato, was uh, C. Joe's first black belt. Mm -hmm. And later on, uh, I learned more history about that. And I didn't know how fortunate and blessed I was in uh, the connection. Mm -hmm. So I continued my training, and uh, I haven't looked back since. You heard that, guys, right? Kaju Campbell roots, man. He's got it there. You know I mean, and and you know, I was telling the other, the other person, it's just that, you know, the Kaju Campbell people, the Campbell people, and I guess you heard me say this before, has been the, the most innovative, uh, 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 eclectic system. You know, I mean, I mean, nothing against Taekwondo or Karate or anything that because tradition. Yes. Yeah. But the tradition within the Kempu system is so eclectic that I look at you, you I look at. Sam and I look at all these other persons over here, you have your own identity and that is what makes the Kempo system is so innovative. It's just that the identity that you have, it becomes, you know, the a, a George Lim's method and style, but the expression is also, but I see you, I can see the identity and it's like, I don't see you, but then I all of a sudden I see you, you student demonstrate, I say, oh, that's George student. Oh. That's a Cuban actually. Well, that we can do that. You see what I mean? It's, it, you have all that identity, and then when you, your student begins to teach, you're lost. You're not in there anymore because he's practicing that expression. It's just kind of just down. But they had it from from where you, where you started, and it was good. You know, um, guys, I wanted to say there's really something. A couple of years ago, George Lim and I was in uh, Houston, Texas, was it? Yes, Houston, Houston, Houston mm -hmm. right? And he was talking about that. What interested him about what I was talking about was the word hope, because hope is also Christianity anyway. Yes. You see what I mean? And we was talking about that when anybody that comes into the school, the, the thing that was, was really inspiring is just that, why did you come into the school to learn? Not, not the martial arts or anything this way. They came inside because they're hoping that I can teach them. And the second thing is that I hope that I can, I can, I can learn something from them. You know what I mean? Yes. And that from here. And that is one of the things that's really inspiring because in, in uh, the world today, we need a lot of hope, faith, love, and respect, you know? I see what is happening with your, your students because you know, they look at you and they look like look as to the other instructor. They look at, I'm hoping that Grandmaster George Lim can teach me how to kick ass and save my life. <laughs> and inside, we are doing say, as an instructor, I hope I can fulfill your dream. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's and the biggest fear. <laughs> that, that, that's a fear, but see, the thing is just that um, you're so mild-mannered, you see, and you project that, and you have that confidence in you. So when people see that, without even coming out, but as I look at you, without even talking, I see the inspiration of you. And having a beard, you know, uh, uh, doesn't hurt at all. <laughs> I mean, it's like the wise old <laughs> Chinaman, you know. What I mean? Thank you, Susan. You know what I mean. And it's like people people look at the person with a beard and gray and everything. Chuck has got a lot of wisdom, <laughs> and sometimes wisdom is not necessarily spoken, but just by facial and body language. And the, your body language and the way you move and the way I seen you move, it commands the respect when people see that donated. Damn that guy that move. Bam, 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 don't be saying. You don't have to talk, man. All his action, all his action is doing. I better listen to him because I hope I don't get spanking from him. <laughs> well, thank you for the compliment. <laughs> yeah, but you know that that's really great. If you were to put down everything in your life right now, what do you think is the most 
your, your, your best accomplishment? Well, I think my best accomplishment is uh, teaching and sharing what my teachers have shared with me and to continue their legacy. I think that's the most biggest accomplishment and my future goal is to continue that. Mm -hmm. um, I know martial arts health-wise has saved my life mm -hmm. and uh, it's done well for my family and uh, I'm a very appreciative and I want to give back. Mm -hmm. Well, you're doing an excellent job. Thank you, sir. Because the quality of your teacher, your, your students, shows the quality of what you're projecting out. And if you have that many schools, they're following something. They're not following nothing. They're following something that is there. And being there and being that, I hate to say it, the wise old master. <laughs> and that's something. The Thank projection, you. you see what I mean? I mean, I mean, for me, you could be sitting on with your legs crossed and go, mm, <laughs> and, and they would follow you. <laughs> and I'm, just, I'm just playing around it, but you know, that's really something else. And you know, that I'm hoping that you become one of our members. You know, I would really love to have you into the International Kaju Temple Association because there's so much that. I feel that you can give and we can give you and we can work to really build the organization. Besides that guys, I just want to just put this in and I want you guys to just come register and registration is free. What we are forming, those so, who so you know this, is the IKA is actually have a university, a learning university of which I wanted to want you to get involved. We're going to tell you okay. on, on how to do that because what it can do is just that, we, um, you know, a lot of things right now is going virtual and if you can't be in Portugal all the time, you can put your material on the, on the IKA website and we can mass media on this one here and you can get it to your students and we have a certain type of program that is going to be able to funnel things into your school. You see what I mean? Then we haven't got that out yet, but we, we don't want anybody to know as of yet, but we're, that's on the work. And <laughs> now already you know it, it's coming out, but we have something really going for the, for the IKA. And guys, I just want you to know that IKA has been around since 1969. It just went into a slump a little bit. Now it's back up on live and we're going good. And this is why we have Grand Masters like this in the Unified Grand Masters Association of America here, working with Sam Allen. Now, that's me talking too much, but I want him to say something mm -hmm. about it. Give me, if you were to have a bunch of, of students and they're asking for some kind of wisdom or inspiration, how would you inspire them? Well, I think the best way continue your journey, listen and be loyal to your teacher, seek out knowledge to become a better martial artist and to become a better person. Not that guys, become a better person, okay? And become a good martial artist. I think that there's a real good difference there. A person can be a martial artist or a good martial artist, you know? And I know where you're going on that, being a real good martial artist. And what I want to emphasize, and to be a really good martial artist is not one that goes around kicking butt, but how to fight without fighting. And that means using your the skill that you have spiritually and morally and all of that. And that you're projecting on it. On it. And besides that, you know, everybody's got, typically most people in the country can wear that, uh, that uh, pullover, right? So you're already talking about the spiritual, the mind and the body on it. And I think that, you know, you're leading up astonishing to me because I, I didn't know that you had a son that was had his own church or pastor, right? Yes. It's fantastic. So you can see that here we have a family, <clears throat> men of God, that is really thinking. And, and as in the martial arts, all of our inspiration actually comes from the one above. And from that's the person above there that has given us the inspiration to teach our bodies to, to, to become. I mean, we all know that, you know, in the first the original Kaju Kembu prayer starts with Almighty and Eternal God, protect of all people, trust in thee. And what it does is just that that alone is telling you that we are inspired by God and he, he gives us men like Grandmaster Lim and other Grandmasters to do the work on earth here to build better character, not personalities. There's a real big difference between personalities and character. But building people of character, this is why they have schools, and I believe you have it because we all do, character building. And this is where you have all that good character. Now I can see that in there. The character of the students is a projection of what you've done. I mean, if, some, if it wasn't for some of them being tall or short and that and then I close my eyes, you know, and just visualize, then I would see a hundred small George limbs walking around, <laughs> which is good because as an instructor, 
the greatest gift you can have is to teach your students to become better than you. Yes. Sir. And your students are projecting that. So that means when we go to heaven, hopefully, you know, I mean, everybody wants to go to heaven, nobody wants to die. Yes. <laughs> you see what I mean? But should that happen, you know that you have students who are, that will going to carry on the legacy. Right. So I'm encouraging him to finish your book and get your book on side in the legacy of George Lim. You going to, are you working on that, hopefully? I want to my students this. There you go. There you go. You got you. Yeah, that's all. Because the students is going to be seeing you from their eyes, but you're going to have to interject and say, "Okay, good. I see how you see me." And you be <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, like like when I wrote my book, I, I asked my students about it. I said, "Is that how you saw me?" Because we cannot see under our nose. Correct. And then, and then they, that's that's. Good. I mean, the, one of the one of the questions I asked, and I said. So, when you die, you see, how would your eulogy be written? You know, so I started writing my own eulogy. <laughs> but anyway, you're going to be back next year, right? Yes, sir. And hopefully, we're going to be in a lot of places working together. Yeah. And really hoping that you can join our committee on being one of the advisors within Kaji Kimbo. Yeah. Would you do that for us? Sure. You heard I'd, that, right? I'd, I'd be honored to. You, 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 we heard, right? Okay. Because yeah, this, this, this is the only way that the organization can build. And, and the reason why I'm doing this, you know and I know, there's so much faction in, in the martial arts, not only Kaju Kembo in the martial arts, but I'm talking about, about uh, within the Kaju Kembo and Kempo family, okay? We, we are all good. Every single one of us is masters. And I want to get away from the ego, yes. because a lot of people, and, but ego is sometimes necessary, mm -hmm. yeah? Because it puts us in check. But too much ego is, like an egg that's falling off the wall, you know, and it's gonna crack, you see what I mean? And we have to have the balance on that. So you guys understand that, right? Again, I'm gonna add in, click on the, the, the subscription and the bell and so forth. And now, people wanna get in touch with him and his school. Um, uh, can you repeat again where where you, where you where would be the best way to do it? The telephone number, oh, location? Okay. Sure. Uh, the best phone number to contact me is area code 602-525-8472. Okay, you see the number is coming across. It's going to be right there. And your main school is where? Uh, Phoenix, Arizona. You want to put the address down? Oh, right? yes, it's uh, P.O. Box 1933, Queen Creek, Arizona, 85142. And my email address is lim, all one word, limkarate, L-F-M-A, at gmail.com. Well, I know that's new because all the old time we use AOL. <laughs> all right, so, all right that's, that's good. Um, geez, you know, I can ask so much questions that, but you know what? We're going to be working together in a way. Yes, anyway, sir. Anyway, so there's going to be a lot of things, right? And you can always count on us for your support, uh, for our support and, and things that way. Um, thank you very much for, for sharing you. your time with us. And you guys check in over here and uh, make sure that you follow him on. And he's going to be writing his book because I'm going to make sure that he finish it. And at the same time, make sure that you check on my book called The Legacy. All right? Guys, you take care. Mahalo and talk to you soon. Bye-bye.